whatever when you stop pursuing whatever. Feeling like a prodigal. To make a decision. When I lay down my whole life, he keep living the life I was living. He had to break it way down and he did it with so much precision. I can't do this without you, I'm a sinner. Who am I kidding? Could have said no, but I didn't, yeah. Now I'm forgiven. Trying to do it independent. I'll be honest, I was tripping. You got to cherish every minute. Tick tock and your time's up. It's free to follow in the word of God who really wants to live life tied up. I feel my joy in this world for me now. I lay back and rejoice and be glad. You told me be bold in my music, they gave me a pen and a pad. I think I that he didn't give me all the things that I prayed for Cause I wouldn't be doing the things that I know that I really was made for Got a second chance, let me hit my holy dance Gotta thank him in advance that he put me in his plans Had to repent and wash my hands, now his mercy's got me cleansed When you know that he before you, tell me who can be against Jack, yeah Everything I do, I do it all for you Every breath I breathe, I give it all to you It's no secret, I know what I'm supposed to do Father, I surrender my whole soul to you Stop caring what my friends say The way I'm balling on them now They should give your boy a 10 day The church service every Sunday The Bible study every Wednesday Still serving in between The devil trying to intervene He met him on the winning team We got the victory It ain't no mystery We put him out of his misery He ain't messing with my ministry No can't let him get to me The holy life just meant for me I left the father for a rent to me Look at all the things he did for me He took his scripture to rip for me I can't repay all the debt that I owe So I let a hand on my GPS He gonna tell me which way I should go Gonna be a time when everybody's gonna have to bow down and confess. Hey. Had to show them that I'm down for I lay my body to rest. Hey. Yeah, I can't do this on my own. Nah. So I got him on the main line. Now I'm walking with the same mind. You got the love that you can't find. Far from perfect in your eyesight, but I know you got me. Now I'm living in your whistle, can't nobody stop me. Everything I do, I do it all for you. Every breath I breathe, I give it all to you. It's no secret, I know what I'm supposed to do. Father, I surrender my whole soul to you. book of Ruth, chapter number two, beginning at verse one through five. Again, the book of Ruth, chapter number two, verses number one through five, while you're preparing to read from the word of God. If you missed Wednesday night Bible class, you missed a whole lot. The spirit of God did some wonderful things uh, Wednesday night. I want to challenge you and commend you and encourage those of you who are finding your place and getting involved in the things of God. I'm just excited about what the Holy Spirit is doing as you become an active part of this church. It is critical, it is critical that every member of this church become productive and that we do not have a spectator spirit in the house of the Lord. 
and that you adopt this church as your church, not just uh, adoption is not wit by papers, but relationship, involvement, and communication. To physically join a place and end it there, you're not really joined. You're not really joined until I can feel you. When the woman with the issue of blood touched him, Jesus knew he'd been touched. He said, who touched me? Because she had joined herself to him. She had a right to get something from him. And both of them knew that that person was joined. Y'all ain't feeling me. (laughs) Get the tape. It was a wonderful time. We're going to begin at verse 1. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth, the Moabitess, said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Then said Boaz unto his servants that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? Whose damsel is this? Look at verse 3. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and her hap was to light on the part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was the kindred of Elimelech. In other words, uh, she just happened to... Uh, light on the part of the field. She just stumbled up on the part of the field. Mm -hmm. She just seemed like it just occurred through happenstance that she found her way to the field. And uh, that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, My assignment to you is to talk to you and pray for me. My throat's a little under the weather, but my head is okay. Uh, (laughs) So I can make it. Uh, nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. Say that with me. Nothing Say it again. Now, now, before you say it the third time, I want you to think about everything you have been through good and bad. I want you to think about your presence in this service today. I want you to understand that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. I want you to think about the things in your life that seemingly make no sense. Some of them were painful. Some of them were hard to bear. Some of them you're going through right now very frightening because you have uncertainty and apprehension and anxiety about what's going to happen out of this. And, and I want you to bathe your soul with these words, that, that your life is not chaotically confused or distraughtly composed or miscombobulated, but in fact that everything in your life has been carefully orchestrated by a God who is a conductor over the affairs and the events in your life. And I want you to get this so deep down in your spirit that whether things go good or bad from day to day, you are armed with the message that you heard this morning, nothing just happened. Say it again. Nothing just happened. Say it again. Nothing just happened. Say it again. Nothing just happened. One more time. Now, Lord God, I stand in your presence today, and I'm humbled to stand here. I'm privileged to be your child. I'm absolutely honored to be your preacher. What a privilege it is to preach your gospel. What a blessing it is to be covered by your blood. Thank you for your amazing grace, your infinite wisdom. Thank you for your reach 
and your ability to reach into the cesspools of life and snatch me out of the garbage of sin and begin the long, laborious process of rehabilitating me from my thens into my nows. I thank you for what you're going to do in this service today. Most of all, I thank you because you're God. When I bow my head, I talk to the boss. Thank you for having direct access into the heavenly where I stand. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> this particular story is, is so delightful, it's difficult to preach. It's delightful because if you were, as Bishop Jones uh, talked about, a storyteller, then you, you are in a smorgasbord of events because there is nothing any more captivating uh, in the Old Testament than this particular story of Ruth. To understand what happened in this story and just to, to read it, it reads like a novel. It reads like a mystery. It doesn't so much read with deep theology and biblical undertones. It reads like poetry and prose. It is well written and well orchestrated and it is captivating and it is easy to ingest, digest, and appropriate. In no time at all, in a few pages, you have fallen in love with the characters, become involved with their affairs, you have felt their pain, you have shed their tears, and you are personally involved with them in a very significant way. The story would stand on its own cognizance. It is a story of encouragement and love and support, human relationships, human survival, family interaction on the, on the highest level. It, it is the opiate of expression to show how even in the sunset of your life, God can use you in a significant way. It expresses the survival of relentless women who tenaciously endured adversity and set their faces flint, determined to survive, overcame obstacles, endured to the end, and made it over. It is a story of gracious men who went beyond the scope of their own akin and reached out to someone who was a stranger and covered them and took care of them. And with gallantry such as would rival any age or dispensation, brings a woman from the outside to the inside and provides for her all of her life. It is a story of genealogies whereby we see the long legacy that goes toward making a king that would shake up the nation of Israel and would become the premier king for the nation of Israel, a young man, David. We see where he came from by reading this text. Theologically, it is mind-boggling to discuss because when we look at the theology in the book of Ruth, we know that the book of Ruth is a template for a far larger issue loaded with shadows and types. It brings to us significant issues as it challenges us to understand that all of the characters in the book of Ruth are the backdrop for historical data that points to a panoramic view of the life of Jesus Christ and the fulfillment of Jesus Christ. And suddenly we begin to recognize that when we look at a character like Elimelech, we are looking at a relationship between him and his wife and how when Elimelech died, uh, Naomi became very, very bitter. And, and in the same sense, Israel became very bitter as they lost relationship with Jehovah and, and it was widowed as it were and estranged, a cast away woman who had become very bitter because she was denied relationship with Jehovah. And we see the two sons and seeing the splitting of the nation of Israel down to the tribe of Judah. And we begin to see how they break and divide and then die. And through their death and the famine thereof, we see Ruth, who is a Moabite woman who is connected to them uh, by marriage. And now her husband has died and she is estranged and she goes back to Moab, goes back to Bethlehem uh, with Naomi, Ruth being a type of the church, Naomi being a type of Israel. The church gets connected to God through Israel who walks her back home to Boaz who is a type of Christ and Boaz who stands there and sees Ruth over in the corner gleaning in the corners of the field, spies her and brings her from the background to the forefront, covers her with his skirts, makes her his wife, legitimizes her, authentic authenticates her, causes her to be an heir of a grace of which she would have been estranged had her blood prevailed, but because his blood prevailed over her blood.